African cities are growing faster than any others on our planet. At least a third of the recent growth is from rural people migrating to cities for access to economic opportunities and better social services. A lot of people tend to think that our work is more about protecting the environment or the planet. Our business is around basic services, the provisioning of basic services, be it for waste, water, sanitation, uh, making sure that we have roads and storm water. But with climate change uh, coming in, it means we need to look at those, the provisioning of those services differently. In 2010, just 400 million people lived in African cities. By 2050, this number is expected to triple. In the past 15, 20 years, the city has really spread um, about 63% of what it was in the early 90s. Analysts suggest that Africa's economy will continue to grow substantially on the strength of its abundant natural capital and rapidly developing human and social capital. Uh, the estimates at the moment speak to the fact that uh, there will be an average increase in the temperature between 4 to 7 degrees by the time we're reaching 2100. It will be so unbearable for humanity to survive and uh, it is uh, upon us to look at it that way. Now just an increase of one degree has got quite a major impact. It will increase poverty, it will increase inequality and uh, it will slow economic growth food production will be affected. The continent has historically generated much lower greenhouse gas emissions than its developed world counterparts. But the situation is changing rapidly. With increasing industrialization, urbanization and population growth, African cities are fast becoming major contributors to global greenhouse gas emissions. Being the most vulnerable in the world to the dangerous impacts of climate change, it is now vital for these cities to transition their growth to low carbon resilience building pathways. Where there is currently um, limited and aging infrastructure to provide services, climate change reduces the city's ability to provide those services such as energy provision, water supply, waste management. Many of the largest cities in Africa are coastal and are exposed to rising sea levels. Poverty, informality and rapid urbanization increase the vulnerability of large numbers of people to rising temperatures, intensified flash flooding and declining food and water security. There is very limited capacity for governments, businesses and citizens to cope with these impacts. We have really benefited from the climate change um, greenhouse gas inventory process which we undertook um, about a year ago. It really brought into focus the areas that we should be paying attention to as the primary or major sources of greenhouse gas emissions that the city has. For instance, it was clear from the process that the transportation is a big issue. It was clear from the process that waste management is another big issue. And it was also clear that household energy demand has also really changed. Naturally, once we have this kind of information, have this kind of evidence, it is easier for us in our planning process as to how we'll respond and the kind of investment which we believe we need to be doing or making, even how we communicate to our citizens for them to appreciate the enormity of the challenge that we have and the specific challenges which have been identified. With good city governance, Africa's growth could be managed to limit climate change risks and greenhouse gas emissions. A global approach also uh, informs the fact that the northern countries have to actually more or less provide financing and technical assistance to the development of South. And through global efforts like the one that is being run by C40, we get a lot of opportunities where there is a transfer of both technical skills and capacity and finance from the north to the south. Increased access to climate finance could help African cities address existing developmental backlogs and social needs. As technology disruptions happen, cities need to be ready to harness emerging market forces to achieve investment in low carbon growth. 11 C40 member cities in Africa have pledged to deliver their contribution to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change by developing robust, evidence-based, long-term climate action plans. These cities are being supported by C40's Climate Action Planning Africa program. There's a lot of good practice, best practice for first world countries. A lot has been done there. 
but some of the solutions are just not suitable for the African continent. So the CAP Africa program is providing us with that opportunity. As a critical component of this support, advisors are embedded in each city to help coordinate the climate action planning process and build capacity within the administration. By December 2020, all 11 participating cities will publish ambitious but implementable climate action plans that will set them on course to becoming low carbon, climate resilient, sustainable and inclusive cities by 2050.